Here it is. Oh, holy. So about a week ago, I got a call from one of our YouTube subscribers named Tony, who said he had a bike that might be up my alley, a 1954 Harley Davidson KH. The bike had been in Tony's family since he was a kid, but the problem is it hasn't run in over 50 years. So today is the day we're gonna take a shot at getting this bike fired up for the first time in a half a century. I don't care if these tires are 70 years old, Chris, if this thing runs right, I am absolutely taking it for a ride. This bike, it looks like a really nice example, but I'm a little bit worried. This KH never actually ran it, so we're gonna find out exactly why he didn't run it, and we're gonna hope it's just because he didn't have time. Worst case scenario, we're gonna be clearing that bench off, and I don't like working on K model engines. <laughs> Bro, that's no good. Oh boy. <laughs> wow. If ever there's a shortcut not to take, it's running a bike with a dirty oil tank. It'll contaminate the engine and it will not be long until it needs a complete rebuild. Oil tank's coming off. I know that's your favorite job, Chris. <laughs> K model, unit construction. It's actually Harley's first unit construction setup where the motor and the transmission is set up in the same case. They came out with a K model in 1952, and it was an update to their 45 cubic inch model. So they started the Harley 45, the Harley Flathead Twin in 1929, and ran that in the WL model all the way through 1952. They made very few of them, 52 Chris. Yours is a 50. 50. Yeah, so Chris has number seven off the line of the 1950 WLs, which is where they're like transitioning into this K model. They were probably already had this in development at that time. Now were these 55 instead of 45? That's the cool thing about this bike. In 1954, they actually increased the displacement to 55 cubic inches. They updated the cams in the top end, which made for a much more powerful bike. On top of that, this is a 50th anniversary model, which is rare in its own right. They only made about 1,600 of them. I probably have another one of these oil tanks. And this one looks like it has a hole in it. <laughs> I, would, yeah. I would say that's definitely a hole in the oil tank we basically have two options. We can knock out the dent and try to weld it up, but we do not want to ruin this chrome. Second option, we can try and get lucky and see if we can find a replacement oil tank inside the museum. That looks like an NOS one. This is different. Yeah, yeah, okay. Now here at Wheels Through Time, there are a ton of potential places that we could dig up the proper oil tank. Dusty and a little rusty. Cool scallop paint job, still got the bracket on the back. Hey, you guys haven't seen one of these oil tanks around, have you? No. No? All right, one more spot. So it turns out none of our options were as good as repairing the original tank. I knocked out the dent and welded it up and did my best not to disturb the chrome. That looks real good. That was completely the right decision. Anytime we can fix the parts that were original to the bike, it's a win. I'm gonna take this outside, put a little bit of gas, a few screws, some rocks, some gravel in here, just shake it. It'll help break up all the rest of the debris that's on the inside. We got most of the big stuff out, so get this as clean as we can, and hopefully we should be able to just continue using this stock tank. Tony's dad was actually a famous racer. His name was Dan Neely, his friends called him Buzz. He raced Harley Davidson KRs in the 1950s and 60s all over the country. He was actually nationally numbered and won a ton of races. The KRs that Buzz raced were actually based on the very same platform as the bike that we're working on now. When I visited Tony and picked up the bike, he actually gave me his dad's racing leathers, vests, and steel shoe great displays for wheels through time. So the more we dive into this bike, the more I'm realizing that it absolutely hasn't been run since it's been put back together. I'm not even sure the bike's ever been taken apart. I am a little worried about the carburetor also. You know, this thing's been sitting for so long, there's really no telling what's inside the carburetor. That float is one of the old cork floats, and that is nasty, useless. I'm gonna roll with this carburetor because it looks absolutely beautiful. So we'll just do a little clean up. So cool story about actually chasing down this motorcycle. I never actually planned on buying the bike. When Tony first called, he said he had some really rare parts and there was one part I had to have. So I don't know if you caught up with us on our show about the 1939 Crusturation when we found the really rare Rhino bags. That's only half 
of the puzzle. This Rhino seat, 1938 and 39 only, is so incredibly rare. When Tony sent me pictures, I just had to have it. One of the best parts of the trip to pick the bike up. I also bought this really cool 1951 AJS Matchless Sidecar Enduro Racer. Tony's dad, Buzz, actually used it in mud runs and jack pine type of Enduros all over the Midwest. It's 500 cc's, what it's got a swing arm, that's a Harley muffler on there. There's the map, the roll chart. This bike hadn't run in 50 years either, but Tony made me a deal I couldn't refuse. I had to buy it anyway. So running a bike is one thing, but taking something that's been sitting over 50 years and trying to ride it is completely different. I mean, the tires are close to shot. Uh, we don't know if it shifts. We don't know if the clutch works. I mean, problems are potentially endless. Chris, let's put this battery in this side before we put the oil tank in. I bet it'll be easier. Where does the hot wire go to on a K model? I don't want to take this tank off. Speaking of, dude, do we have a key? Yeah, there's two switches up there. There's no key. That could present a problem. What's the one that's running in that loop? Right there? That's the clutch key. Like this. Key. In the toolbox. Do they fit? It's got the Harley keychain on it. It has it. Top. <laughs> oh, that one fits. Which side is what? Do you know? Nope. Okay, that one spits in that side and turns. Okay. So, I'm assuming. Well, man, we're going to have to. Um, oh, we just keep going further back. We spent 10 or 15 minutes trying to figure out the wiring on this bike. On everything else that we work on, we pretty much have the wiring diagram memorized, but this bike being something different, good thing we have Google. Okay, so- Did you figure it out? Yeah, the hot side <laughs> goes off the, so the positive goes to the horn. The positive to the horn. Yeah. Huh. Perhaps yet another reason. Good? Yeah. Okay, turn the key. Okay, turn that key on. Hit the horn button. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yes. Left is light. Right is ignition. Well, give me ignition, Chris. It's it's dull in my lights up here when you do that. So. Is it? Yep. Ooh. There's fire to the points. So let's get a little sandpaper. We're going to hope that the coil's still good on this. Oh yeah, that's good. Good blue spark. That's a good coil. Miracle. All right, so we've repaired and cleaned the oil tank. We had the carb apart, reinstalled it, got a new battery installed. We've got spark. This bike, I'm thinking, is ready to run. Okay, we're buttoned up on this side. I'm going to go ahead and put my three quarters of a quart of oil. Yeah. Chris, I think... We made a lot of progress. So, we've got, is this our fuel line we got to put back on? Um, we need to check and see if that fuel line even holds suction because if it doesn't, we're likely going to be uh, in a scenario where we've got to. I can't really do the, the whole lip test because I just tried to, no, make, tried to cover that one up. There's no way that's going to hold fuel. It's rubber coated, braided on the inside, and it's just going to come right out of that. Yeah, that'll work. Rubber, if you want it, it's here. We got my side buttoned up. We got gas, we got Earl. K model summer! Yeah! <laughs> I can't wait. Just in case you wanted to see one run, we do that too here at Wheels Through Time. All right, we tight. We tight, man. But what I didn't do was set the whoo, we'd have been kicking. That sucker would have went to wide open. Back the throttle off real fast. Now go. Yeah, I can hear it hitting. Okay, good stuff. Okay. Let's bring this sucker down and put some gas in it. Beautiful. All right, man. First K model that we worked on here, at least the first street model K that we worked on here at Wheel Through Time on the YouTube channel. So it's been a while. A lot of the racing stuff upstairs. Now don't get any gas on that. That looks like it could be original paint. Speaking of original yeah, paint, let's test. I've been wondering this whole time. So 
I got this real cool paint depth gauge from Sean. Now, what I always heard from Tony was that his dad repainted this bike. I've been staring at this, and to me that looks like original paint. These probably been repainted. So original paint, somewhere in between one and a half to three, three and a half mil, um, 426, 427. 527. I would think eight, yeah. So this I think's a repainted fender. Let's yeah. see about this. Mmm, see, I knew it. 338, 242, 270, 213. See, yeah, yeah. that's an original, original paint, paint gas tank. Front fender, <clears throat> five, three, 434. 352, probably repainted fenders. Very cool, original paint, gas tank anyway. Frame I would definitely say is original paint, swing arms original paint. Okay, um, yeah, load her up. Take away. <laughs> <laughs> That's good, that'll get us there. All right, so. First time in a long time, this thing's gonna fire back up. If we're lucky, we've done all the stuff. Chris, in a couple hours, we've done a yeah. ton to this bike. I think we just need to kick it. All right. If you guys got any idea on how many kicks, I have no idea, because we just don't know. Sometimes it goes easy. This bike sat for 50 years, 50 years. This bike's probably 70 years old, like right now. It's been sitting for 50, so since this bike was 20 years old, um, Fuel on? Turn the fuel on. Oh. Oh, okay, that'll be a problem. Oh boy. Based on how this bike's gone, we probably should have seen this coming. We're this close to getting it running and there's fuel pouring out of the petcock. I really hope Matt has another one lying around. Otherwise, we're not riding this today. This one. We're gonna use this $300 petcock on that stupid thing. <laughs> the good news is we didn't get it on the paint. <laughs> okay. Okay, fuel on. Come on. A little dinking on the float bowl. Don't fill up. We are officially ready. Is it leaking yet? I see nothing there yet. There you go. Yep. Okay. Chokes. Three prime kicks. Any gas yet? A little bit. I'm not used to kicking with rear suspension. It's kind of cool. That sounds like gas. It feels like it's got a good come. Oh, there it goes. Ooh. Ooh. Oh! Holy oh. 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 <laughs> You alright? Woo! <laughs> I smell running hair. Oh, that was the hair on my hand. That's what it was. <laughs> Oh, there, there we go. There we go. There we are. Here it is. It's too bad Ken's not here. He would have guessed 100 kicks. Come on. Here it is. Here it is. Here it is. God, come on. Come on. I'm totally going against my own rules here. If a bike doesn't start in five or six kicks, there's generally something wrong. I know better than this. I'm done. I think at this point, the frustration has reached its absolute max. Chris and I are gonna head outside and work on this matchless. One thing we don't do around here is work on British bikes, but today felt different. We've done a ton of work so far in just a short amount of time. Chris got spark back from the Magneto, cleaned the gas tank, we had the carburetor apart. Come on. All right! Three kick! This 
this matchless is actually a ton of fun. It fired up really, really easy after sitting for like 50 years or so. Uh, Chris and I are gonna end on a positive note here. Get to that K model tomorrow. Okay, so I thought about this all night, man. Literally all night. How's your beard, by the way? I was gonna say, I was thinking about it all night too, but just the fact that I'm still <laughs> grateful to have a beard. <laughs> when I put this carb together, I don't think I put it together right. I mean, when you choke a bike like this, it should puke fuel. Yeah. You know, you ought to have fuel running out the carburetor, and it took kick after kick after kick. I hate to say it, but if the carb was set up right, that flame would have hit your beard a lot, lot sooner than it did. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so the problem was not enough fuel, and I bet when we take this float bowl off, we're gonna see exactly why. Uh, yep. There's actually supposed to be a fixed jet in this carburetor. Let me see if I can find another one. Bingo. Look, bro. Yep, there's your fixed jet. That's a hole that's like yeah. 40, 50 thousandths of an inch. This is a number nine jet. Okay. Now, okay, so now I'm gonna reset these needles. Willie G. Davidson used to ride a K model. Okay. Elvis rode a K model. Elvis rode a K model. All the greats. Matt walks up. <laughs> we'll ride a K model. <laughs> <laughs> Here it is. <clears throat> All right. I turn that gas on, Chris. Okay. So, now that the carb issues are fixed. Think it. How many kicks? How many kicks? Yeah. How many kicks do you think? I'm gonna say five. Five kicks? Yeah. I think it's gonna be one kick. Three prime kicks. Okay, I'm gonna move over here. Yeah. <laughs> Wait a minute. This is for you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here we go. Ready? Yeah, three kicks. I think we got gas. Yep. All right, come on. As hard as I kicked yesterday. No. Ooh! Ooh. Come on. All right, once more. Come on. Yesterday, so. Yes! <laughs> <laughs> Man, it runs really good. There's yeah. not a lot of engine noise. Like you said, it's like a 45 that actually has some attitude behind it. Right. Man. So you're saying we got a chance. <laughs> <laughs> Ride it. Oh, yeah. As much trouble as we've had with this bike, I've got to be honest, I'm a little bit nervous about trying to ride it. Wow. You're up there. It's not running rich or anything. That jet's perfect. All right. Moment of truth. So it's one down. What's worse? These tires are sketchy. <laughs> Rear suspension's like, they might, they might be onto something. <laughs> you know? That whole front and back suspension, there might be a future. But it pulls like a freight train compared to the old 45. Uh, transmission is like real friendly. Bike looks great going down the road. I mean, it's definitely got that, you know, iconic 1950s styling. Yeah! Oh, yeah. Yeah! 
Sounds good. Great exhaust note. Yeah, it's definitely that thing of like remembering. Break, <laughs> break. Every time, man. I think we got a winner. Let's see. Yes. Yeah. Definitely got a winner. Oh, man. Amazing bike owned by an ex-racer, guys. Thanks for tuning in. Harley-Davidson K-Model Summer. It's winter. It's freezing out here. Thanks for tuning in. Subscribe, hit the like button. Check out more awesome content. Getting them running. It's right here at Wheels Through Time. Awesome. Take it for another spin, man. We need to get we need to get Chris back in his Elvis impersonation costume on that thing. On that thing? Yeah. 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 <laughs>